Hey, good morning, um, everybody. Thanks for being here. This is uh, another seminar in quite a series that we have been uh, organizing. And actually, I want to take the opportunity to thank Isabel for uh, following up on the seminars. If you have any idea for your own to present or any speaker you think should come and give a seminar, you can always flood the idea. Today, um, we invited uh, Luc Dendove. Luc Dendove is a very esteemed colleague with whom we have been working uh, over the past years uh, in a very fruitful collaboration between CIMIT and Simbestaf. When you see some of the numbers about publications coming out of the long-term trial infrastructure, the long-term trials we have here um, in, in Mexico, part of those publications come from student collaborations that uh, we have been doing together with Simbestaf and Luke's uh, research uh, team. What I always say is the uniqueness is Luke has a lot of nice ideas, nice research tools that we don't have, and we have the long-term trials that can actually uh, be the, the background or the, can generate a story uh, to, uh, by, through using those, uh, that, that, those uh, insights uh, that are way more upstream than what we are uh, doing. Luke has a very long and recognized uh, career. He started its, uh, its work at the uh, uh, University, University of Leuven, then was uh, quite some time active in Rottenstedt, and uh, finally landed in uh, Mexico in uh, Simbestaf, where he's uh, still leading one of the most important research teams on carbon nitrogen cycling and uh, recently micro uh, uh, organism processes, uh, but I'm sure he will explain that way better than uh, I can do. So thank you, and uh, let's give a round of applause. Um, uh, good morning. Good morning, and thanks for coming. Um, I, I, um, I try. But okay, um, that's the title of my talk. I mention that on the bottom uh, because if you read some of the earlier papers, then people uh, try to uh, give certain characteristics to bacteria. And I try to show you that, uh, for instance, they are copiotrophic, they are oligotrophic. Um, I'm not too sure about that anymore. I think uh, bacteria are much more flexible. Uh, I don't know if so characteristics or important in that. It might be competition. It might be predators. I'm not sure about it. So uh, I tried to explain a bit to you. So this is a paper that is ready to uh, submit. It's um, a collaboration between different institutes, uh, some uh, younger researchers uh, working in already. Uh, it, it, it's rather uh, a good collaboration. I'm quite, quite proud of it. Uh, we have now 31 published peer-reviewed manuscripts. We got uh, 745 citations. Some of uh, these citations come from some very important papers Brum wrote. Uh, and we have an index of 14. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this collaboration. Uh, we have quite a lot of other papers uh, ready to submit. Okay, we know uh, that agriculture practices uh, affect yields and soil characteristics. We studied some of these in El Batan and Obregón, uh, but I, I focus mostly on El Batan. There's, there's one pitfall in El Batan. Uh, changes in, in soil characteristics. Uh, we have one problem in El Batan, I mentioned it immediately. We got two replicated plots. So if you do an analysis, a statistical analysis, then you get problems because the variation is rather uh, 
Great. So often you see clear-cut effects, but they are not significant. Uh, so, um, yeah, some of the problems. That's one of the commands of the last paper that we submit. It doesn't even know it is accepted, but this is a command I often receive. We know, but I'm a bit worried about it because uh, it returns and returns. That's why uh, Obregon is that if we want to get some soil samples and extract DNA, that becomes difficult. And if we want to extract RNA, then it's even more. Okay. Uh, we were expecting that uh, these differences, especially in uh, organic <coughs> matter, would have a large effect on, on carbon and nitrogen mineralization. This is a very simple representation of the aerobic incubation we do. We got some soil, we trap carbon dioxide, and we measure in the soil uh, mineral N. And now recently we start to extract the DNA to see what is happening there. Another command that I was not really aware of is that if you uh, start to work with bacteria, then you have non-parametric data. Uh, I've never, uh, well, did a lot of research on, on soil characteristics, and parametric, but uh, bacteria, if you count, they're non-parametric. And again, if you try to do some analysis, then, uh, yeah, significant difference is rather difficult to obtain because uh, non-parametric or more stringent, if I can say it like that. Okay, so I, I, I said I would mention the problems we are in. Um, these are some results of carbon and nitrogen mineralization. You see not a lot of differences between your treatments, although you have a difference in carbon content. And I compare that with Broadbalk and Rothamsted, where after, how long was it? More than 160 years, you really have a big difference in, in carbon mineralization because your carbon content is uh, extremely different. I, I just want to mention, uh, you know that David Jenkinson published a paper on, on uh, microbiomass carbon. Uh, there's no replicate in Broadbook. So if you look at the data on his original paper, then there's no replicates there. Additionally, he includes uh, one soil and you look at the line. So, but anyway, I think it was a very important paper, but uh, I have some questions. Anyway, uh, we didn't detect a, a, a big difference in carbon uh, nitrogen mineralization. We did some measurements also in the field. We did that quite a while ago. And that was one of the problems we faced when submitting these papers on carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emissions, and nitrous oxide emissions, and methane emissions that uh, review was pointing out, you only have two replicates. Okay. Um, uh, this is the nitrogen we measured in the field. We don't have a lot of, of difference there. As we test it in the lab, so we think we need some more time to see an effect of conservation agriculture versus conventional to see an effect on carbon mineralization and nitrogen mineralization. But okay, you have these data, you have these differences. Um, uh, so what is the effect? of these different on uh, microbial populations. And uh, this is a principal component analysis. And it's uh, you try to uh, get all your data on uh, bacterial groups. You try to correlate them and you place your treatments that you have. Uh, can this uh, be part of the same that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. So what you get is um, you get a, a clear separation between permanent beds and uh, between conventional beds. Uh, and, and what do you get in, in uh, conventional beds? You get copiotrophs, which are organisms that uh, like, like fresh organic material. So they consume it, they degrade it, they mineralize it. And if you go into permanent beds, you've got organisms that they prefer nutrient depleted. might be questionable as a word because normally it has more to do with nutrients than with organic material. But I use it here 
also for organic material. So if there's a microbiologist, I apologize for using that because some people are very sensitive. Get vermicutus, which is the bacillus. Um, they're rather easy to isolate. If you read papers on isolation of microorganisms from soil, you will mostly find these, not few, we'll say, mostly these. Uh, Acidobacteria is a huge group of microorganisms, but we only have isolated about 20 of them. Why is that? These organisms are very difficult to grow on agar or so it's clear now that the agriculture practices do affect our microbial populations. As I mentioned, permanent bats, they favor uh, these groups, which are uh, oligotrophs that prefer, I think this is the opposite. They prefer uh, nutrient rich, this should be reversed, but anyway. And then we have uh, conventional bats, where we get these organisms that uh, prefer organic rich environments. Why? Because if you have conventional beds, uh, then you eat organic material. So microorganisms get in touch with organic material. If you have permanent beds, then you leave organic material on top. This is no direct contact with the microorganisms, only very slight contact or very low contact. Okay. Um, we, we, we did a lot of experiments, so I mentioned. So I, I tried to compare uh, a sampling we did in 2014 and a sampling within 2012, and, and still sampling in 2012, 2014, we'll get the same results. Permanent bats preferred by oligotrophs, preferred, they are favored. And if you go to uh, uh, conventional practices, conventional um, I always have questions, is this for real? Do you have changes over time? Are my results correct? Because you always have this problem of technique. And what do I mean by technique? When we did these first analyses, we had clones. We had about 150 sequences of DNA. And then we went to uh, Piro, uh, which is about 100,000 sequences. And now we go to Illumina, and then we can talk about whatever you want. 400 million, 200 million. So the question is always, there's an enormous evolution. It's, it's, it's quite exciting, this is great. Because we're fed up with carbon and nitrogen in the ocean. But then you always have the problem uh, that you have to make the same thing over and over again. And you have to make the same thing over and over again. Can I compare really my results that I've obtained a couple of years ago with the results that I've obtained now? So what we um, started an experiment this year, uh, trying to collect uh, salt samples over the year. And we want to look at Population. We try to look at certain processes also, because it's one of the critiques uh, you can have on this work. It's very descriptive. descriptive. Uh, what is this all about? What are you really doing? What is the importance of all this? And I would say we try to start with getting the techniques right, and then we can start to focus on some questions we have. So I'll mention some, some questions at the end of my talk. Uh, but we want to focus on, on, on nitrification and functionality. Uh, Functionality of RNA from a soil is very difficult. If you look at literature, you will find some papers on it, but very little. Problem is soil conditions. Uh, and we are very lucky that Obregón, we succeed in extracting RNA. In El Batán, forget about it. So you check the literature. It's the same with, I, I mentioned bacteria, because extracting or amplifying DNA from fungi and is not so easy. Archaea, we can do it, but it's a borderline. So look at the literature. Uh, you will see some papers, but if you try to compare, because in L, in, uh, we published a paper on fungi in Sonora and microscopic eukaryota, there's nothing to compare it, really. Fungi, it's okay. You have some, but microscopic eukaryota, very little. Okay. Um, if we have this question about copiotrophs and non-copiotrophs, then 
Uh, my idea was we get organic material. If we get organic material uh, available, we'll get some copiotrophs. Uh, a rhizosphere is normally in organic carbon. So what we're trying to do now, uh, how are these two behaving in the rhizosphere? There's a lot of organic carbon. Is my correct? Uh, environments. And also, if we apply organic material, a crop residue to the soil, who's going to degrade that organic material? Okay? Uh, this is this fairly recent, and I haven't gone into all the details, but uh, you know, we, we did, uh, we met population vegetative flowering grain building. It's uh, the bulk soil rhizosphere. This dynamics a bit, and then again this uh, another uh, rather interesting uh, development. I, I always used to work with SAS, uh, and uh, people convinced me that air is much better. It is a, a, a magnificent tool, uh, but uh, it takes some time first to adjust to it because uh, SAS is very straightforward. Air is a bit strange if you're not used to it. Another problem. See with air. I can do this. This graph, so well, the results were obtained in RI and then put it in Excel because I don't like the graphs. But you have about six or seven packages that can do this, and it's I get lost sometimes. It's just easy, it's straightforward, always the same. But the problem is all these biological techniques they don't exist. And in ERA, you've got all these updates, uh, well, daily, I think. So my advice is uh, people really want to, want to work in, in yeah, bioinformatics, go to ERA or, or, or Phyton. I don't know Phyton because they're trying to convince me also to start working in Phyton. <laughs> I don't know. Presumably I will end up doing it. But uh, anyway, but um, we, get, we get some clear changes again in population in the rhizosphere. So, uh, and, and, and are the holds more or less? Uh, I mentioned that. Uh, techniques there in, in R. Uh, but, uh, not too sure if it will all give better results. But, uh, and, and, and this is also very recent, although I think the program, or, or this was, uh, they started to write it when we were in Oak Ridge. They mentioned it. Um, this is where you've got your uh, bacteria identified with, with uh, ribosomal DNA, sorry. Uh, and, and then you try to link these populations to functions. And that is very interesting because uh, otherwise you've got 600 or 1,000 species. Bloody hell, what are they doing? Okay, I know Bacillus and I know uh, Pseudomonas and I know Equis and I know that. But this, this becomes uh, interesting. Now, I think they, they're developing it because uh, RNA is not so easy to extract, but I hope we can link this with RNA. Uh, this is heat. I think, uh, but I said it's just, I did it two days ago. Um, and then this is another experiment we did with, um, these are all incubations over time. So if you see these 7 and 14, uh, normally we have about 260, 250 data points. Um, and then you see here we added bean material, and this is unamended. And then you see that the bean, the population, there's a shift in population. The story is I apply organic material, and there's a shift in my population. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, we can uh, confirm what we found in conventional production versus uh, conservation agriculture. But as always, once you get some uh, answers to your question, you get some other questions that you're asking. And that is, uh, as I said, the, I think the paper of Fear of 2007, where they, they defined certain groups as being oligotrophs and certain groups being copiotrophs. And then you, you, you compare actinobacteria, this group, what is it, Micrococcacea, and then you've got here Gay and then you see these are favored 
by organic material you applied, and the other's not. So the idea, yeah, it's not working. So uh, I think it, it would be rather difficult to say that uh, one bacterial group uh, has these characteristics. I have to mention when we go to species in bacteria, then we talk about 97% of similitude. Similitude, yeah. Uh, we differ from chimpanzees, I think, 0.3%. So what are we talking about, really? Okay, but we are aware of this problem, but we should sometimes not forget it. Uh, okay. Uh, as I mentioned, these groups are very easy to isolate, so they are well described. But in a the soil, they're normally not that important, only 3% of them. And then we get the other bacillus of 5%, so what is all the rest doing? Uh, one of the other problems, when we write these papers, then um, normally we mention about 15 groups at the maximum. And normally you found between 500 and 1,000 uh, genera, genus. So what all the rest is doing, we don't know, and, and we don't even want to talk about it because we would a get a paper of I don't know how many pages. But anyway, so would you, uh, the question was, would soil characteristics uh, affect our behavior of certain groups when we apply organic material? So we apply organic material in one system, which is conventional beds, we add it in permanent beds. So we would hope that this group which is Acidobacteria EE. This is a very important group, but we don't know actually what it is doing. Um, and then you see uh, in, in permanent beds, when you apply um, bean material, their relative abundance increases. When you apply it to conventional bed, so there is an effect of uh, soil characteristics. So we wanted to have some soil a bit more diverse to see how different bacterial groups respond and this, we used uh, El we used Chinampa, and we used Texcoco. And then this is uh, quite nice. So you get a complete separation of your different groups, different environments. Uh, yeah, one of the problems I have is with uh, canonical correlations. When I do a principal component analysis, it's very nice. I go to canonical and it's not so nice. So my explanation is there's a factor defining this that I can't, well, I don't measure it. Or is it soil characteristics I'm not aware of that it's important, or it's interaction between my populations in the given environment. But I mean, I said I would mention the problems I see, but uh, okay, I think we can, uh, and this is then in the different ecosystems. Now, um, you have the Chinampa, you have the Batan, Texcoco, and then you apply bean material. How are these groups respond to bean material? And then you see Bacillus, it's increasing. Why? It consumes the organic material, that's fairly well known. But then you start to see these groups, like, oh, I think I missed that one. Which is a rather well known group. Uh, and normally it is a copiotroph. However, in this system, in Texcoco, when I apply organic material, it participates in the degradation of the organic material. And when I look at El Batan, not at all. So, conclusion, these groups adapt themselves, or they have the metabolic, metabolic capacity, but the environment, the competition with other groups, defines how they respond. Yeah? So, what we... we with a little uh, flow diagram of which organisms are favored along a gradient. So we apply here some organic material, and we measured populations, day 1, day 3, day 7, 14, 28, 56. And then you see the groups that are favored, their relative abundance increase. And this is Alomonas. And if we go to Batanda, we see the normal Bacillus. Uh, and some Streptomyces also along the line. Yeah. But you see, there are different groups that participate or are favored by degradation. Okay. 
I think I remember, if I remember correctly, Titius said that bacteria in soil normally keep the genetic capacity. They don't shed so much of the capacity as you will see in the reactor or in my stomach. You know, there's a, a quick interchange of genes in organisms. So this is again three systems. I apply immaterial. Now you get a shift in your population. Okay, as I mentioned, this is all very well, very nice. You've got beautiful uh, BCRs, and you say, oh, we've got the shift. Uh, but, but it's rather descriptive. So, um, can we learn from all this? Uh, first of all, I think we can use the techniques to answer specific questions. Uh, and one of the specific questions we are trying to address now is an obregón. That's uh, a problem with. Uh, that uh, germination uh, plant emerges and plant stand decreased under dry sowing, but not in wet conditions. So we treat them with a pesticide or herbicide or whatever, insecticides, fungicides then. So we assume there's a problem there with, so I think with all these techniques we now have, we try to look if it's really a biological problem we're facing. Okay. Um, well, that's not that difficult. But this is not that easy. Uh, due to soil conditions. Uh, there are some people who extract to metagenomics, or where you pay a lot and you extract all the DNA and then you analyze everything. Um, yeah, it's rather cost. Costs a bit. Uh, but then you need and I'll mention that later on, then you need computer power and you need knowledge to all these pieces of 300 or 100 DNA spares to link them. That's not that easy, neither. But anyway, we're, we're, we're working on it. As I mentioned, uh, is, uh, and then another um, uh, study we, we, we started is um, to look at our populations. Why do we want to look at populations that are related uh, to uh, trace gas emission, greenhouse gas emission, nitrous oxide. Why do we focus on nitrifiers and not on denitrification? There are not that many. So we try to focus on something that is rather easy to study. Uh, additionally, the genes or the, yeah, the proteins involved in the process are rather limited. Uh, however, for instance, AMOA, which is ammonium uh, monooxygenase, where I thought there was one, now there are already three different types. So if you want to look at these things, these processes, you have to consider all the possible genes. So we're looking at, we are looking at permanent beds, conventional, burned, and then we have minus and plus, and we want to measure this. This is the first uh, a preliminary experiment. We add ammonium to these different sites, and what we see when uh, is applied in the field, then you see that a lot of oxidation of ammonium, so you have a rather vivid or active nitrifier population, which is not that. Yeah. Okay, we want to measure, or we measure that. We want to measure these gases. We want to measure biomass. We go for microbial structure, nitrifiers. This is not that complicated. As I mentioned, you already have three of them. I don't know how many I have of these. But then we want to. Uh, If you consider 95% of the activity is normal activity of the organism, it's not related to the process you're studying. You've got a bit of a, a needle in the heart, I think. So, uh, uh, it's not so evident. So, we're trying to work on that. Um, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet, but I think um, with all the changes in techniques we have, uh, well, I mentioned it. We started 150 clones, then we went to 100,000, and now I don't know how many, 200 million. You need a bit of computer power. And we're only starting uh, with that. So um, we, we will start now, since yesterday, I think, 
finally after two years of negotiating, uh, we can have a new option within the department which will focus on bioinformatics, statistics and supercomputing. One of the problems I see in statistics personally is uh, time series. I mean, if you uh, have a change over time, how do you compare these populations? What we normally do, what Richard Webster always told me, you just uh, take the mean and you compare the mean and that will be enough and forget about all the rest. Uh, but I think we need, need some... Uh, just there. Supercomputer is simply to, to get your metagenome, metagenome together. Uh, you know, bioinformatics. Yeah. There's a lot of dispute about the systems. You've got your sequence and then you have different systems to verify or check or identify the organisms it belongs to. And so you have certain journals that say we want that system. Europeans normally go for the European system and American American system and, and uh, yeah okay but anyway uh, that's uh, another of the questions we have and then um, another thing we will try to do is we did a lot of these experiments with organic metilocopiotrophs oligotrophs we want to, to get it all together it's about 20 experiments uh, we want to compare and, and, and see if with all these data we have uh, some bit bit of meta data mining see if we can get something out of it okay that's where we are at the moment. Um, I must admit, as you can see, this is not my work. Work of uh, a lot of people, and I haven't mentioned them all, but uh, would like to thank them. Um, one of the advantages I think we have in Mexico, we have a lot of people. That's for sure. A lot of very enthusiastic people, very capable people. Uh, funding is not always that easy, but okay get along uh, and, and, and we, are, we have no access always to the most uh, sophisticated uh, equipment but okay these uh, sequences we send them out to uh, Microgen Korea um, uh, I don't know if you read about uh, the German group who now extracts uh, DNA from soil from uh, yeah, our, our ancestors and have you read about that? that now they can extract DNA from soil. Because all DNA doesn't degradate in soil. So you, it is preserved. Uh, so if we look at Neanderthalers where they walked, uh, yeah, we can find traces of this DNA. Only mention it, uh, the amount of soil you need to do this is not 20 grams like you do in El Batan. But it's a huge amount. And what these, sorry, these Germans have, they developed a robot. Uh, so you can assess or process an enormous amount of what we have the people they have the robot we hope in 20 years time uh, the robot will be cheap but uh, all the rest will be rather expensive but anyway um, I would be um, very to for the field experiment I think what Brum mentioned is uh, is true uh, it's a unique, uh, yeah, a unique experiment. When I answer these questions, I only have two replicates. I always say it's the only field experiment in the tropics that I have access to. Okay, there are two replicates, but well-maintained experiments for more than 25 years, correct, bro? You don't find them. So if you want to study these things, I mean, okay, it might be useless, but I'm not sure sure then you need something you can rely on that's well done. Because if you go into the field and we compare whatever, El Batan, or we compare uh, forests, the variation is huge, enormous. And often you don't know what they did. So um, I am I'm grateful. And also when the money was short, uh, they were more than uh, willing to help me. Uh, I am in debt to see the stuff for the uh, yeah, infrastructure. And of course, Conacyt uh, was, uh, was very generous with uh, funding us. I think that's it. Yep. Uh, thanks, Luke. And uh, even that I was involved in, in the work, I still got some new ideas by seeing it presented like that. So as always, you keep us uh, on our toes. Any questions from the 
from the audience. Please use the microphones because we have over, I don't know how many people, but uh, several connected via the webinar. So if you can use the microphone, Ivan. Hi, Luke. Uh, Hi. Very interesting. I, I think I might have missed when you collect your soil samples to do your extractions, what depth or from what part of the soil are those soil samples? Yeah. We, normally, we normally work on the topsoil layer. Why we do that is because we hope we have the, the biggest diversity. I know there are papers published that you have to be careful with the profile. So I, I'm well aware of that. Uh, but it's, it all has to do with where do you want to focus on. Uh, if if uh, I said 200 samples to analyze, uh, if I would go into profiles, then I, I get lost. It's all it's all always trying to yeah. So that's zero to twenty. Zero to fifteen. Zero to zero ten. To zero 15. to twenty. It depend. It depends a bit. Yeah. But normally it's zero to ten. And then I don't know if you could go back to the soil uh, tests of the three different locations. I don't know if I saw this cocoa with a pH of nine something, or maybe it wasn't pH, it went too fast. Uh, is it too acidic? Uh, acidic? Too alkaline. But I think you have to, this cocoa, is this cocoa, uh, maybe give some more details on. Ah. Yeah, this cocoa, the pH of nine, is not here at the station, right? What, this? No, the one at the bottom. Oh, no, 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 oh, sorry. Oh, yes, okay, I have to explain this. Because you, you have these differences in, in El Batan. We see a difference. And so we see an effect of what we do on our population. So to, to stress, to, to go in an excess of variation, we went to uh, soils in the area. It's a Chinampa. It's in uh, Chochimilco. Okay. Uh, Texcoco, uh, you, you got 9.4, which is not a lot. Because in Texcoco, we have 10.5. But we it to not to go to be too extreme, you know is what that, I mean. It's a Texcoco Lake, right? Yeah, it's a Texcoco Lake. Lake. Oh, it's right. a lake. Yeah, yeah. And and you have a, a huge uh, salinity also. We did a lot of studies on on, on Texcoco. Uh, that's why I included it. So El Botan is the I think if I'm right, El Botan is a CA plot yeah. from El, for, yeah. from the long term trial. Yeah. Chinampa is yeah. the yeah. So Chimilco, if I'm saying yeah. it right, and then Texcoco, is that Texcoco? Is that Texcoco? Oh, sorry, sorry. Say, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. Right. And, and one last question. No, no. Please. What's your view on these biofertilizers that are dealing with these bacteria and they're being inoculated in the yeah. seed, etc.? Right. Yeah, well, this is not my, my per well, it's personal, but I'm, I'm not the only one who um, would say that. I remember. David Jenkinson saying that, uh, and I remember uh, Martin Alexander saying that, and I agree completely. I think it would be very difficult. Uh, there, 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 there are two reasons. First of all, you have an equilibrium. You have a system, an equilibrium. You apply something, organisms, it's food. Second, if you have a soil, you apply it. How are you going to apply it where you need it? I can imagine you fertilize a seed. And then you hope. We did some experiments. We did an experiment with Bacillus, and it was fantastic. It was the best. Uh, we had an effect for one month on the roots, and that was it. Now, I'm, I'm actually doing an experiment uh, with Mace, uh, with one of the farmers who has this brilliant system of uh, uh, biofertilizer, and, and we sterilized his consortium. And in the beginning, the sterilized consortium gave better results than the consortium. There's another reason why I'm very skeptical. Uh, for this experiment, we checked the literature. Check the literature, and it tells you quite a lot. Where was it published? Which journals was it published? Um, I get very doubtful. I remember in Leuven, uh, Ruh, uh, Brown knows Ruhl, uh, but it was Karol Vlasak with Vasospirillum in Brazil. And they had a positive result, so they published it, and they could never repeat it. Uh, so I am, um, but I, I, the experiment we're doing is we we using these techniques we have now to look more at survival. So we have this consortium, we'll characterize it, we'll see what's happening. Problem is always okay. I'm working in greenhouse because if I do it in the field, and again, you know the problems in the field, people do things you don't know. 
uh, one of the other, that's, that's the reason why I prefer to work with Simit. We started to work with somebody in, where is it? Uh, yeah, in uh, Road to Querétaro. I don't remember the name, Tepeji. Nearby Tepeji, I don't remember the village. And, and you try to collaborate, and then they call you, and they say, oh, we fertilized. Yeah, do you have sample? I don't have it. Uh, so you can't. And, and that's also one of the questions of review is why did you do it in a greenhouse? Yeah, I can't say I can't work in the field because they don't allow me. It's not like Europe. I remember we measured some trace gases in Chiapas, in Su Chiapas, and we, we left our, our PVC tubes in the field. They stole them. And we were communicating constantly with local people. I, yeah. It's one of the reasons also why I think field experiments and CIMIT are brilliant. And that we do some some, field, some some lab experiments. But it's very difficult to justify to review says, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Um, just a comment. We actually also have a field trial that's been going on for 20 years in San Luis Potosi. Uh huh at the uh, INIFAP station, so it might be interesting also to do some uh, investigation there. They uh -huh. also evaluate conservation agriculture, minimal tillage, and conventional s uh, system, and two replications. Okay. okay. What, what kind of soil is it? Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, if we can extract the RNA, then I come immediately, <laughs> because it's rather... Uh, no, no, sorry. No, no. Oh, well no, no, it's, 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 not, it's not even, no, sorry, it's this, it, it not even to do with the type of soil. It, 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 is, it is at random. We had, in the beginning, for instance, in, in El Batan, we sampled, or, or you, you tried to extract DNA, you got nine replicates, well, you got treatments, and all of a sudden, one soil, you can't extract it. Whatever you do, now we optimize that, and blah, 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 but uh, it's, it's, you, 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 if you go to conferences or congresses, there was one at Braunschweig uh, last year in December, where, and then you hear the same, the same questions. Uh, DNA, not a problem. RNA, proteins, that people, huge amount of protein, well, huge amount of money dedicated to extract proteins because that's the final solution. I mean, DNA, RNA, and proteins, but it's, and they got money, you know, Europe is one million euros, but you know what I mean? It's, these techniques are not yet what well, they should be, but I think they're brilliant. I love it. Uh, thanks, Simon, for your comment, and I actually think that several, um, that, they, that several of the platforms that took some time to get them ready slowly are going to be ready to be put in, in these, kind of, these kind of networks and taking advantage also of, of thinking all the PhD students that actually have been connected uh, to the work and that uh, I think that's something we have to reactivate also in the in the team to see how can we can there be a PhD student working on San Luis Potosi or um, so definitely Nela uh, is, is working on that Ivan is working on attracting more students so I think that's how we can keep this kind of work going any more questions question over there somebody else no Somebody online? Sorry. Somebody online has a question? Now that I was recently following a seminar online, I know how frustrated it is. You want to say something and nobody remembers that you're actually hanging on your computer? No? One time, two times, last time, no question. Luke, you had a question. So last, if you have a specific question in your I'm more than willing to investigate it. But the descriptive, I think, no, because we've done it. I think we should, we should start using these techniques to really, I have a problem here. Can I, can I answer it with my molecular biology? I think so. So if you have a question, more than welcome. Yep. OK, thank you very much, uh, Luke. And I think this is a clear example of research, research for impact through partnerships. When I'm asked what is the value of the long-term trials, I just show Luke's uh, first slide with, I don't know, I don't even remember, more than 30 uh, share joint publications and uh, H index of 14, and that usually helps to, 
convince the more academically or oriented uh, donors. So, Luke, thank you very much. This has been a brilliant partnership and there's more to come in the future.